Hello guys and welcome to another problem. In this problem we're going to be attempting to solve equalized array. So I got this problem you know recommended to me from HackerRank today and uh, I'm pretty much on my lunch working from home so we're going to tackle this. So I just looked at the problem and I knew that we definitely can solve this. Um, so in this problem Kyle has an array of integers and he wants to reduce the array until all remaining elements are equal determine the number of elements to delete to reach his goal. So for example, if his array contains the elements one, two, two, three, we see that he can delete two elements, one and three, leaving two and two. He could also delete both twos and either a one or a three, but that would take three deletions. The minimum number of deletions is two. So we're asked to complete the equalize array function and it must return an integer to the number of deletions required. Then we have our constraints. So the size of the entire array can go up to 100 and the elements can go up to 100. So by seeing this, we know that we have choices on what we can use, what data structures to use. We can either use maps or we can use arrays because we know what the constraints are. We know that this can actually fit Right, we can use a counter array to work through the frequencies within our um, array. So how do we solve this problem? Well, we need to keep track of the values and their occurrences within the array. So for example, we know that one occurs here one and two occurs here twice and three occurs one. So what we want to do is keep the maximum number of occurrence. And then what we're going to do is take the entire size of the array minus that max of the array minus that max occurrence. So in this case, the max occurrence is going to be two and the size of the array is four. So four minus two will give us our um, minimum deletion, which is going to be two, right? So with this said and done, let's go ahead and start coding. I don't think that this problem is really difficult where you know, I need to whiteboard it or, you know, really explain in detail. I think that most people will get this. Um, so I was thinking maybe just pull one implementation, but you know what, I could do both. Um, you know, just I just do both. All right, so uh, we can start by doing the map one. So let's create a map and it's gonna take in an integer for the key and an integer for the value. And let's just call this one map. And it's going to equal to new hash map. All right. So what we want to do is we want to compute the frequency of the values. We have two choices here. We can use the for loop and check to see if the map contains key. And if it contains the key, we increment the value by one. If it doesn't inc uh, do that, we increment, um, we set the value to one, right? That's the typical way we do for counting, um, you know, frequencies within, you know, arrays or list or whatnot. Um, but it would be nice to take another approach um, just to show you guys new things around, you know, the Java 8 API and, um, you know, up to the Java 14. Well, we're using Java 8 here, so I guess I'm gonna constrain to Java 8. So what we can do is use an in stream, all right? And then we can use the off here and we can pass in our array. And then we can um, use, uh, let's not use that. So we can, so the problem we're using parallel when you're trying to map things to other data structures is that synchronization doesn't always work correctly. So what we're gonna do is just pass in the for each here. So we're gonna say dot for each. And then we're going to say that for each value, we want to go ahead and do something. So for this, we're going to go ahead and pass in the value for um, the for it, right? So for this, what we're going to do is we're going to say that if, right, the map that um, put if absent, right? So if the key is absent from this, we want to go ahead and put the key and we're going to put zero. And the reason is because the reason why we're putting zero is because 
we have not seen this. this the key is absent, so this does not exist. So what we want to do is we actually want to put the key in there. Okay, so this is one way we can do this. The next thing to check to see that if it's present. So what we're going to do is we're going to compute if present. All right, so if it's present, what we're going to do is pass in the key. And then we need to go ahead and pass it the value. So we're going to give it key and we're going to give this as a value. And then what we're going to do is add one to the value. So we're going to say a value plus one. Okay. All right. So here, all we're doing is this does not exist in the map. So we have to put in, put, a, put the key in the map and we put the key with the value zero. And if um, it's present, then we actually want to go ahead, take the value and we want to update it based on the key. All right. So um, there we go. Now, what we're going to do now is we need to go ahead and get that minimum, um, uh, what do you call it again? Uh, so the minimum number of deletions. All right. See that? All right, so in this case, we could just return and we want to, right, and we want to minus that from, we want to get, get the maps, the map.values. And then we can use a parallel stream. All right, so we want to parallelize this. Then we want to use a max. So I'm just going to drop max down here. All right, so for this, we need to actually, um, compare the values. So what we're going to do is use a comparator. All right. Dot comparing and and then we're going to pass an integer and the int value. All right. So this no matter returns an optional and what we want to do is not return the optional because then that is going to throw an exception. So what we can do is just say an exception. So what we can do is just say that um, if, you know, it's, there is none in there, then um, it shouldn't return the no such element found. We're just going to go ahead and say or and then else. And we want to just return a zero for that. So if there's a max, then cool, there's a max. If there's not a max, then we're just going to go ahead and return zero. Okay. So um, this is pretty much it for the first part here. Now we can go ahead, scroll down and hit the run button and if there are any issues we can fix those. Um, so what does it say? So in stream of this thing cannot be found. Okay. So let's go up here. And I think I, talked about this before we're using in streams is that it does not um, this does not exist so what we got to do is copy this and we can uh, paste it down here and then uh, we're just gonna go ahead and add a add stream here and then dot all right and that should take care of that that error and now uh, let's run this again and what is wrong okay so comparing int integer dot int and I spelled value incorrectly all right so now we have that let's run this again and see if there's anything else all right and then that worked so we're good here we're good and then let's submit this all right and then that kicks in so uh, what we're going to do is uh, solve the go through the next one and we're going to solve it all right so um, in the next one, what we want to do is uh, let's just create uh, a set and you guys will probably see why this is. So in the second part where I went through the, um, the values, the values, right? The thing is that the values come to the keys and the keys have to be unique because there are sets. So when we go through and we grab the max values, um, we don't want to go through duplicate keys without actually, um, making sure that our array does not contain any duplicates. So for the sake of that, we need to remove those. So we're going to create an integer here. Uh, instead of integer, let's call this set. It's going to be equal to new hash uh, set. 
And then what we want to do is create our int array. So let's create an array. Let's call this um, counter, right? Counter is fine. It's always counter. And you're going to do this new int array. We'll just pass it 101. So the reason why I'm doing 101 is because we need to account for 100, right? So we do, yeah, so 100. Okay. So um, what we got to do is go 100. Okay. So um, what we got to do is go over our um, values. So we can say int value, value in our array R. And then we want to go ahead and count how many times we see that value. So remember that in this case, we're using the value as a subscript location. So if the value was three, we go to our array and we look at the third position within our array and we're going to say, hey, update that value in that place by one. So by to do so, we just do plus plus and then we're going to do counter and then we're going to pass in the value. All right. And um, for the set, what we're going to do is we're going to say set dot add and we're going to add the value just because we want to just make sure that we have no duplicates. And the best place to do this is wherever we're trying to get the count from. OK, so in this case, right, so let's do int max here and set this to zero. And then what we need to do now is go over the values again. But in this time, we'll go over the values within the set, right? And do, and we're going to say that um, if right our max is less than the uh, count array, the value in our counter array, right? So counter, and we pass in the value. Then we're going to make uh, the max, that current value. So we're going to say max equals uh, counter. And we're going to pass in the value here. All right. And then all we got to do is return our array, that length, right, minus the max. And um, I think this should be it for this problem. So let's go ahead and run it. If there are any errors, we'll go ahead and fix them. If there are any errors, we'll go ahead and fix them again. All right, and uh, this is good. And let's run it. This will be it for this tutorial. I will see you guys on the next one. Have a good day. Bye bye.